Sorry, I'm weirdly anal about this being centered. I wonder. <laughs> you center that and then we'll move. I just think it looks nicer. and Megan, the, the Spine, Spine Breakers. Breakers. And today we thought we'd do a recommendation video, which yeah. I don't know if we've ever done. I don't think we have ever done a yeah. recommendations video, so. Um, which is sad as booktubers. Yeah, it is. But today we're gonna recommend some sci-fi to you guys that features badass women. Kick-ass ladies. Yeah, either, mm -hmm. either as the authors or in one case, we have one written by a man. We do. That just has a, a really great um, female protagonist, but... Yeah, it's like a rare case of a man doing a good job writing a woman. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we're drinking... The Schutz. The Schutz. <laughs> which is by the Schutz Brewery, and it is their American Pilsner. And it's a cat hair on it. My One of my cats was up on the table just fucking around, and so she got hair. Yeah. Everywhere. So these beers will be flavored with cat hair. It's a good pilsner. Very easy drinking, good flavor. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, Deschutes can do no yeah, wrong. Yeah, Deschutes, I don't know if I've ever had a beer from them I didn't like. I haven't, like, even their IPA, and I'm not a big IPA fan, but yeah, yeah they're by far my favorite, like, brewery, not in Springfield. Yeah. Yeah. True. Also, you might notice that we totally accidentally pretty much dressed exactly the same today. <laughs> yeah. We did not plan this. We didn't plan this. I just showed up here, and I was like, we are dressed the same. And our makeup even looks similar. So, so yeah, we've been yeah. friends for too long. Yeah. <laughs> so, Perhaps. we're yeah. becoming the same person. We're merging into one. <laughs> All right, so we have 10 recommendations here, so let's yes. get into it. Some are books, some are authors. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, let's dive in. The let's first is obviously Queen Octavia Butler. You guys are probably sick of hearing us talk about her, but we couldn't make a sci-fi a women in sci-fi recommendation without talking, talking about it too. She's brilliant. It, honestly, like, if you watch her channel and you haven't read her yet, what are you doing with your life? Right. But yeah, she's incredibly brilliant. She tackles uh, social issues in really unique and accessible ways. Mm -hmm. I haven't read her Patternist series yet, oh. but of all the novels I've read by her, the protagonists are all black women. Mm -hmm. um, so I really like that, and I like that they're very realistic like complex mm -hmm. characters they're not yeah. like flawless right heroes mm -hmm. or heroines rather like they're they make mistakes and right and they've got shit i mean they've got shit like everybody does but mm -hmm. they're still very strong empowered women and they kick ass yeah and i like too that it's kind of diverse women because you have like women who are kind of traditionally maternal and then you mm -hmm. have women who aren't and right i mean it's not just the same character rewritten in different yeah, books. Yeah, and in this series particularly, um, she does kind of explore gender mm -hmm. norms. Norms. Yeah. Quite a bit, which I really enjoyed that about this series. This has been still so far my favorite yeah. seri series Hands that I remember. Um, yeah, that which one. Which is Little Brood. And with like the Parable of the Talents and Parable of the Sower is like mm -hmm. a close, yeah. close second. I would agree. That would be my second, second mm -hmm. release. But yeah, she the Lilith's Brood series is pretty heavy sci-fi, so if you mm -hmm. want to kind of start out sci-fi light, um, I would recommend not that. Right. I would probably recommend either Parable of the Sower or Kindred yeah. to start off if you're not like super into super sci into sci-fi already and right. would get totally weirded out by alien stuff. <laughs> yeah, because there's a whole <laughs> lot of alien stuff that happens in there, mm -hmm. and you know tentacle sex. Mm -hmm. Lest we talk about Queen Octavia all day. Let's move on to the next one, which you probably won't be surprised by either, which is Becky Chambers. We love Becky Chambers. Yeah. Um, and this is A Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. She has two other books in the series. I think that's her only novel. As far as I know, I feel like this was her debut novel. Mm -hmm. Again, I would say that this has like a really great, diverse cast of characters, and I think all of her novels do. And they're very character-driven. Um, which is kind of different from most sci-fi, I think. So there's not much of a plot. Mm -hmm. I would say the second book in the series, A Closed in Common Orbit, probably had the more of a plot, plot than the other two. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, I think her strong suit is really in, in the characters that mm -hmm. she writes. Definitely. And I think mm -hmm. that they're very 
I don't know, they're all unique and, mm -hmm. and interesting and their relationships between each other are rich right. and authentic. And, yes. Yeah. And the great thing about sci-fi too is that you can really explore a lot of, of different um, ideas when it comes to like different cultures and, and things easily because of course, an alien from a different planet could mm -hmm. have such a different culture than than we do here. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, the character Sissix mm -hmm. was one of my favorite characters Sissix. in uh, this novel because in her culture, being a mother mm -hmm. was much different <laughs> than it is in ours. And also, something that I found interesting was that um, adults were much more valued mm -hmm. than children. So if a child died, it was not as big of a deal as if an adult <laughs> if, died. And it, wasn't, it was considered not as sad right. as if an adult died because an adult was already like... A full human who yeah, contributed, who contributed to society more and things right. like that, whereas a child didn't, didn't, didn't have all didn't that have yet. All that. Yeah. So next up, we have Bitch Planet, which is a graphic novel. And this is by Kelly Sue DeConnick and um, art by Valentine Delandro. And this is like extremely feminist. <laughs> Super feminist, yeah. Extremely. It's a dystopian where um, women, if they com if they commit any sort of indiscretion, they get sent to this like planet, this whole this planet that is a planet. prison. Yeah. And it's called Bitch Planet. <laughs> yeah. And uh, this is about some women who uh, kind of rise up. They're fucking They're over part it. Part of the resistance. They're done with that shit. Yeah. A lot of again like. Pretty diverse characters, very very strong characters. I actually liked the second volume Me too. better than the first one. Yeah, I loved the second volume. Me too. The I first really, one was good. But. Yeah, I really liked the first one, but the second one was amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so next is Miss Margaret Atwood. So I have Oryx and Craig here by Margaret Atwood. Mm -hmm. um, she, Margaret Atwood is excellent at writing like sneaky feminist sci-fi. I think because like. The Handmaid's Tale is obviously yeah. really feminist, but like in Oryx and Crake or um, like that series or some of her other ones, I don't know that you could say that it is blatantly sci-fi. Blat yeah, not, not sci-fi. Bla feminist. Blatantly feminist, but like she mm -hmm. has very strong characters, and the the female characters really help to drive the story. And they're all, you know, again, they're very complex and well-written characters, which is something that I really like. And she's a fucking word artist. Margaret Atwood is. Like, I'm always astounded by her writing, especially in The Blind Assassin, which is not really a sci-fi book at all, but, um, yeah, she just, it's, it's beautiful and brilliant. And yeah, I need to read more by her because I didn't, I've only read The Handmaid's Tale and The Tent, which is like, I feel like doesn't count because it's just like really short pieces, but yeah, I didn't love The Handmaid's Tale. Mm -hmm. I thought it was good, but I was not blown away, but... I want to read some more of her stuff and see what happens. Yes. Because, as I've learned from the next person I'm going to talk about, right. your first impression is not always correct. But I'm going to talk about Ursula K. Le Guin, who's kind of, I mean, I'm sure if you know anything about sci-fi, you know who Ursula K. Le Guin is. Mm -hmm. I had not a great introduction to her. Mm -hmm. Well, the first book I read by her was um, A Wizard of Earthsea, which was okay. <laughs> And it's fantasy, it's not sci-fi. Um, and she's more well-known for her sci-fi. Um, but the second book I read was The Dispossessed, and I fucking hated that book. <laughs> I did not like oh, it yeah. one bit, but I wanted to give her another try because I just was like, I feel like I really need to like Ursula K. Le Guin. Right, like, I mean, she's, she's a staple. a prominent and, female yeah. sci-fi writer. And so then I picked up The Lave of Heaven. Mm -hmm. Um, and I really liked this one. It's about um, a man who can, when he dreams, he like manifests what he's dreaming about. So it could be anything, like he could dream that all dogs were pink. Mm -hmm. And then the next day all that would just be pink. the norm in the world and nobody else would think it was mm -hmm. weird, but he would be the only one who knew that all dogs didn't used to be pink. Right. <laughs> And so that can have some very dire consequences. Um, and he goes to see the or psychiatrist who um, sort of starts to take advantage of, of that. Um, but he's trying, it's interesting because the psychiatrist I don't think means ill. He's mm -hmm. trying to better the world. <laughs> but things don't always work out that way. But I found this really interesting and then um, since then I've also read the word for world is forest. 
which is kind of, it's set on a planet that gets colonized and sort of what happens um, as a result of that. And I really liked that one too. I will say that I still don't love her writing style. Mm -hmm. She's not very subtle <laughs> with her themes and I don't love that. But I still think she's worth reading. I didn't care for The Dispossessed. A lot of people really love it. I don't know. And one thing I will say in regard to feminism in her books is that I have n the only book I've read by her that had a female pro protagonist was the second book in the Earth Sea Cycle, which is not a sci-fi book again, it's a fantasy. But all her other sci-fi books that I've read so far all have male protagonists and don't really have any prominent female characters that I thought were really great. So there's that, <laughs> but I've heard that um, The Left Hand of Darkness, um, I know that it like explores gender a lot, so I think that that could be... <laughs> Sorry, I'm distracted by my really adorable dog. <laughs> so I think that that could be, you know, maybe more heavily feminist than her other works that I've read. Uh, I actually loaned out my copy of this, but I wanted to talk about The Stars Are Legion by Cameron Hurley. Um, this is a sci-fi book where there are no male characters at all. They're all female characters, which was incredibly interesting. I hadn't ever thought about it before, but I've read so many sci-fi novels where it's all There's men. no female characters, yeah. Right. Cameron Hurley is a really excellent writer, and obviously there's a, a cast of all female characters. There's going to be a lot of feminist themes, but the relationships between the women, there are no men. So, like, that was really unique to me. Cameron Hurley is kind of known for feminist, yeah, feminist writing, um, and very like, diverse and intersectional writing. Um, I think she does a really good job with that. So I actually read The Geek Feminist Revolution by Cameron Hurley, and that's kind of where I heard of, that's where I heard of Ursula K. Le Guin. I had never heard of her, and Joanna Russ. Mm -hmm. I had never heard of them b before that. So um, she kind of has her finger on the pulse of, of feminist sci-fi, and I think yeah. that that shows in her writing. I've only read The Geek of Mist Revolution by her thus far. I do want to read some of her fiction. Okay, so the next book I have to recommend is Xenogenesis by Miriam Allen DeFord. This is a collection of short stories by her and they were all published, first published in the 50s and 60s. Most, if not all of them, explore reproduction. I would say that there was still like kind of problematic things. <laughs> in some of them, right? Um, but you know, they were written in the 50s and 60s, and um, I do right. think they they explored a lot of really interesting ideas in regard to reproduction. Um, so next up is, this is actually the second book in the series, but the Wool Trilogy, mm -hmm. or the Silo Trilogy, Silo, yeah. um, by Hugh Howey. This is our book that was actually written by a man, mm -hmm. um, but Hugh Howey does a really excellent job at writing women mm -hmm. in these novels. Um, he doesn't do that really fucking annoying thing in sci-fi when like you're describing female characters and the first thing you describe are their tits. <laughs> yeah. You know? um, yeah, I got a lot of that when I was reading Do Android's Dream of Electric Sheep. I was like, I really don't need to know what every woman's boobs look like. Her tits were asymmetrical, yeah. but that was fine because she had a <laughs> face for days. Um, it probably be because she had legs for days. Not, oh, nobody yeah. cares about the face. That's true. Yeah, your face, your face doesn't matter because that's where your mouth hole is and like really annoying <laughs> stuff comes out of there. Yeah, so he didn't do any of that. Um, and I feel like the the female character, the main character is a female character, which I thought mm -hmm. was really cool. Yeah. Um, but I felt I felt like yeah, she was really com a complex character. Yeah. And she was like she was a strong <clears throat> leader mm -hmm. yeah. throughout the series, which is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's a dystopian where you can't live outside because the air will kill you, basically. And mm -hmm. so these people live in a giant silo under the ground. And so I think that because of that, everyone really has to work together. And, mm -hmm. and you know, there's women and men in leadership roles. And Absolutely. everyone... And women in, like, non-traditional female... You know, women are actually, like, mechanics and gearheads, and they work right. on the... That is one thing, though, that I will say is kind of a a bit of a cliche. I think is when like the female, mm -hmm. the 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 strong female character is like a mechanic, or a, right? Yeah. You know, or like right a carpenter or something that like normally a female wouldn't do. Wouldn't do. Yeah, she's not just like a kind of like stay at home mom or secretary or whatever. Right. Like like Cinder in the yeah in the Lunar Chronicles. Yeah, that so is, that kind, is of kind of a trope, but. Yeah. 
I still thought that it was a really well written character. Says Murphy. Says Murphy. <laughs> Murphy's a feminist. <laughs> Mostly. He gives some unsolicited kisses. That's true. He doesn't always uh, you do that consent. consent. That's true. You, I didn't say I wanted <laughs> kisses. I said you give some unsolicited <laughs> kisses. That's what I said. All right. The next person I want to talk about is Catherine M. Valente. This so far is the only book I've read by her and it's Radiance. And this is a space opera slash like mystery slash old Hollywood noir. It's really interesting. <laughs> Weird blending of genres. <laughs> um, but you're kind of kinda, the, the main character is a woman who makes documentaries. And she has disappeared on Venus. She was making a documentary about this town on Venus. And she disappeared while doing it. So the book, you're kind of Jesus, trying to figure out what happened to her. It was really good. I loved the writing. Mm -hmm. I loved her writing style, so I definitely want to read more by her. I've been hearing really good things about the book Space Opera by her. Like I said, the, the, the main character is a woman. And I mean, I guess she was pretty well developed and everything, but I wouldn't say that she is like among the top like best female mm -hmm. sci-fi pro protagonists or anything like that. Um, but I still think that she was well written. Her writing style, I feel like, was the, the strong point okay. in that book. I really liked her writing style. And it was just a really compelling and interesting read. Because, I mean, how many space opera, mystery, old Hollywood... <laughs> how many of those do you old see? Old Hollywood noir books are there out there? <laughs> Not many, I don't Not, think. No, I, so no, don't it was just many. a really cool blending of, of genres. That's and, really cool. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I guess lastly, that brings us to talk about Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, yeah, which is like which, the OG. Yeah, maybe we should have talked about first. Because yeah. I just thought it was appropriate to mention yeah. what some say is the first sci-fi novel ever. I think there were mm -hmm. works before that that could also be considered sci-fi, but Frankenstein it's not, you know, heavy sci-fi. She doesn't go right. into the whole um, the how mechanics of, right. of how Dr. Frankenstein created his monster. Regardless, I think it is worth reading because it, it just, it's one of those books that after I read it, I just thought about it for mm. weeks afterwards. It gets in your head. Because there's so many, she explores just like what it is to be human, kind of. Yeah, it's like there's so like much. deep social themes and deep mm -hmm. human themes in it, which is yeah. what I love about sci-fi. When I initially finished reading it, I was like, mm, I don't know if I liked it that much, because, mm -hmm. you know, the writing style is maybe not the most pleasant to read at times. Mm -hmm. and I wasn't too sure about it, but like I said, it's just like, the more I ruminated on it, the more I was like, that was a really good that book. Was a really excellent <laughs> book. Yeah, so... We just had to give it a shout out to Mary Shelley there. The OG. <laughs> Murphy just really wants to be the star of this channel. Yeah. We're trying to do a feminist video here. And you're totally... And here's a man. Jumping up in our <laughs> shit. He's wearing his party boy tie right now. Oh. It has sharks on it. <laughs> Alright, so... Yeah. That's all the, all the sci-fi we have for you this time around. We're definitely always still reading... More sci-fi, sci -fi. and there's a lot of women in sci-fi that I still would like to read. Mm -hmm. um, I think we need to work on reading more diversely. Yeah, because we <laughs> Cause read. this list was pretty white, pretty unfortunately. White. Um, but I have a lot of people on my list that I really want to get to soon. Mm -hmm. And if you guys have any recommendations for us, please comment those below. Mm -hmm. We would love to hear them. Um, and this beer, it's good. I mean, it's just it's, easy drinking. It's not anything super special. Yeah, but it's it's a tasty pilsner. It's a so tasty pils. Would recommend. I think that's it for us today. Yep. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye. Bye.